These are the notes for feasible region, which is the topic covered in section 5.5. Uh, first, a definition. A feasible region is the area on the graph that represents the solution set for two or more inequalities. To find the feasible region, you're going to graph each inequality individually on the same set of axes. And then you're going to shade the region where the solution set from the individual inequalities overlap. So you've been doing individual inequalities. Today we're going to do two or more. Our example is going to be two of them. And then we're going to find where the final area is that I should shade. So our example will be find the feasible region for 7x plus 2y is less than 14 and 5x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 15. So I'm going to start with the first equation. 7x plus 2y is less than 14. And the first thing I'm going to do is I notice that this equation and both of them are in standard form. So standard form is the most convenient way to graph standard form is to find the x and the y-intercepts. So I'm going to start by finding the x-intercept in my first equation. That happens when y equals 0. I plug in 0 for the y. Now I've rewritten the inequality to be an equal sign. And the reason I'm going to do that here is because I'm actually trying to find the line that I want to graph. And so even though this is an inequality, um, having an equal sign here will not make a difference in the end. Um, because in the end, I will have to make the decision about dashed or solid and then where to shade. So I simplify. I get 7x equals 14. I divide both sides by 7, I get x equals 2, and then I write my final answer as a point, 2 comma 0. And I do this exact same process except for the y-intercept, and that's when x equals 0. I plug 0 in for x, simplify, 2y equals 14, divide by 2, y equals 7, writing it as a point, 0 comma 7. Now I'm going to go through this exact same process, but for the second equation, 5x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 15. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the x-intercept again. That happens when y equals 0. So I have the equation 5x minus 3 times 0 equals 15. I simplify, get 5x equals 15. Divide by 5, x equals 3. And I then write that as a point, 3 comma 0. Now, um, I'm going to do the last step here for finding the x and the y-intercepts by doing this exact same process. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. I plug in x equals 0, simplify, divide by negative 3, y equals negative 5 and I've got the point 0 comma negative 5. So I now have four points, two points to graph from the first line and two points to graph from the second line. So for the first line, the two points are 2 comma 0, that's over 2, up 0, and 0 comma 7, that's over 0, up 7. So now's the time when I look at the inequality. And the inequality for this equation is a less than, which means the line connecting these two points is going to be a dashed line. I then am going to graph my second line, and the two points on my second line are 3 comma 0 and 0 comma negative 5. This inequality, however, is greater than or equal to, and so the line connecting these two points is a solid line. I then had to decide which of these four regions, to the right, top, to the left, bottom, I need to shade. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off by taking my first equation, 7x plus 2y is less than 14. 
And I'm going to plug in my favorite point, 0, 0. So I've got 7 times 0 plus 2 times 0 is less than 14. 0 is less than 14. And that is true. So that means that I'm going to color on this side of the equation because that's the side that includes the point 0, 0. My second equation is 5x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 15. Again, I'm going to plug in my favorite point because the line doesn't go through 0, 0. And I end up with 0 is greater than or equal to 15. But this is false. So for my second line, I don't want to color the side with 0, 0. I want to shade the other side. And then, so that I'm very clear where my final answer is, I am going to go through and I'm going to shade with a highlighter, a colored pencil, or maybe just with my regular pencil, but darker the side, the part of the plane that is double shaded. So this is single shaded, no shade, single shaded, double shaded. So I'm just going to come through with my highlighter and highlight this part so that I can be very clear that that is the portion that is my final answer.